Hello, in this video I'll be walking you through the Matrox Powerwall 2.0 software. So this software is free to download from the Matrox website and can be used in offline mode, meaning that you do not need a Quad to go device uh, in order to start creating configurations. So here you see the, uh, the first screen. It asks you to create a new design. Here, let's call it uh, design one and let's create a multi-device design. So you can see, uh, I'll start with a physical wall of width 300 centimeters and height 200 centimeters. If I were to click OK, so here in light gray, you see that's my physical wall, and anything outside of that will not be taken into account uh, for things like the export specifications, which I'll discuss later. So here you have two new view you have two views as opposed to the single view that we had with the Matrox Powerwall 1.0 software. There's the physical view and the source view. Uh, using the physical view, you can see uh, multiple Quad to go devices at the same time. So if I were to add, uh, let's say, source PC1, uh, I could go ahead and do that here. And I could add uh, Quad to go devices to this source uh, as I see fit. So called new device zero, uh, new device one. You'll see that right now they overlap, but I can move all of these outputs uh, wherever wherever I'd like. Uh, and obviously it doesn't need to stay in a rectangular configuration. If I'd like, I could also rotate these outputs and create uh, an artistic configuration with with these outputs. So I have multiple quad to go outputs here, and let's say I wanted to um add another input so if i were to go here add another media let's say i have the pc source already and now i want to add a media player media player one so that means that on this physical wall i'm expecting uh to have content playing from a pc so that's up here and from a media player i could have changed the image uh, that represents this media player as i was choosing uh, a new media, but I can also go ahead and do that through the input management tab. So if I were to choose bezel management, for example, so that's the bezel grid that would show up on your quad to go to allow you to modify bezel or color book uh, to denote that uh, media player. So I can add quad to go devices here too. You'll see uh, you'll see all of those outputs show up on top of this input canvas. Um, so like you see in the physical view, you have a global view of all of your quad to go devices and all of your inputs. Meanwhile, in the source view down below, you have a view of a single quad to go. So right now I'm looking at a uh, new device three. So that's quad to go. Uh, I guess this is the fourth quad to go. And you can see that all of the outputs are located um, either at the top left of this source or at the bottom left. And I can go uh, enable disable outputs. Uh, I can manage the output settings through this output settings tab, whether by enabling, uh, by changing the resolution at which the output uh, is coming from the quad to go, uh, by rotating those outputs. So if I were to rotate this 90 degrees, I could go ahead and move that. I could change the source position. So right now, uh, output one, for example, is at 0, 0.00 of this uh, input canvas, and I can change that if I wanted it to overlap, say, by 100 pixels. I could change uh, left to 100 instead of 0, and you now see outputs 1 and 2 will overlap. I can also change the source adjustments, so this equates to what we know as bezel management, and if you have a device here, you can uh, manage that bezel in real time. And we also have the monitor management, which is new and lets you choose uh, monitors from a predefined list. So for example, if I know I have uh, output one is an HP 22F monitor, for example, I can, see, uh, I can see the width, the height, and the bezels as well. So let's see if we can find something with the greater bezel. And uh, you can see the device change a little bit with that bezel. So down here, you see that blue line, which denotes uh, that thickness of bezel. Uh, if we were to move on to input management, so we already discussed the different images that represent uh, different media sources, uh, and you can change those as you see fit. You can change the aspect ratio, uh, the size 
on the physical wall and the input mode. So input mode uh, is akin to changing the input edit of the quad to go. So that's the edit reported by the quad to go to the source device. Um, when you have an input mode of 3840 by 2160 at 60 hertz, that means that the quad to go is telling the source um, that it's expecting a 4K60 uh, video signal. Uh, there's also a network settings tab. So this is where you can uh, either use uh, DHCP to obtain the IP address of your quad to go device automatically, or you can uh, use a predefined IP address and uh, the same for DNS address. So you can either obtain your DNS automatically or you can use a specified DNS address. There's also the data de uh, device data transfer tab. So this is where you would upload configurations to your quad to go. Unfortunately, at this time, I do not have any quad to go devices connected to my network. Uh, so you don't see any devices here. But if I did have some, uh, then they would show up here. So if I had 10 devices connected to my network, then those 10 devices would show up in this box. Device association. So I have four quad to go devices uh, on my physical wall. Uh, you see two are uh, playing content from Media Player One and two are playing content from Source PC One. And if I were to have physical devices here, this is where I could go associate each of these virtual devices to a physical device. And once that was done, I would click upload and um, that would allow all of those devices to be configured at the same time. Lastly, there's the device management. So this is where if I were to have any devices on the network, you would see them listed here. Uh, you can change the input source. So whether it's the input video, the source video that's being played, whether you'd like to display the bezel management grid, uh, logo, nature photo, or some of the color photos that we have to help you ensure color calibration. Uh, you can change that from the software right here, as opposed to needing to press button one on either the appliance or the card. Uh, display info emulates button three of the quad to go so that will have all of the outputs display information, including the IP address, the serial number, uh, the firmware version, so on and so forth. So it's much of the information that you see down here in this device information box. Uh, but there is some additional information there as well. So that will toggle it on, and that can either be disabled by pressing button three on the uh, quad to go appliance or card, or uh, by pressing this button once again. Locate is a function that we implemented uh, after customers requested a way to find a quad to go in an installation with multiple quad to go. So if you're working on a single quad to go and you'd like to see uh, where that, that quad to go is physically located, you can click uh, the locate button and the two LEDs on the front of the quad to go appliance or the two LEDs on the top of the quad to go card will begin flashing rapidly. And that is to alert you that uh, that's the quad to go that you're looking for. Lock buttons. Uh, so this is a way to lock the buttons of the quad to go appliance or the quad to go card through the software and can be toggled on or off through the Powerwall software.